Good morning, everyone. I wanted to show you this coffee Randy got me. I'm really enjoying the coffees. And I also want to say that Randy was really nice to me on the trip. He bought me coffee, even though he doesn't drink it. He went out of his way to slip me some money so I could get alcohol on the trip because we were hiding it from dad. Dad is James, and James wanted the trip to be like super straight arrow, no drugs, no alcohol. So I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> I'm an adult. I want to have a drink. So Randy, when we'd go to like um, stops along the way, and if I needed to get a bottle of vodka or something, he'd be like, get it, get it. So I thought that was really cool. And I also want to say Randy is an incredible cook. Randy, you made some of the greatest meals. And you were really nice to me. You know, one time I was on the beach and I had just been doing like some yoga way on the beach near the water and he ran all the way out with a, a carafe of fresh coconut water for me. I thought that was really cool. So I just wanna, I wanna give you a shout out there, Randy. Hi everybody, how's it going? Maggie here. I have been holed up in my little apartment here in Puerto Rico working on these videos and sitting on my phone for way longer than I even want. I'm so sick of Instagram and freaking Facebook. Um, but I wanted to check in with you all and talk a little bit more about what's happening with the, the Nikki, James, and Randy show. Um, I'm so bored and sick of talking about this. But there are some really funny memes that are going around that are really keeping me going. So, thank you. I am not a nice person. Like, let's change this. Let's change this backdrop. Let's put it on my Instagram. I have haters. I thought this was really funny. First of all, I just wanted to talk about this picture that I posted. I posted a picture a couple of days ago of me and Randy in front of the Q building. And I shut the comments off. And I said, Happy Chinese New Year. I said, look what we found, the little laugh face. It's the letter Q. I really did this because I wanted to illustrate a point about how people look at one photo or one video on social media, and they will immediately change their mind about you. I, I just feel like our emotions are just like kind of like this tug of war on social media. And you can know somebody for even years and read something that they've said on social media or a picture they posted or a, a reshare of something that you don't agree with and all of a sudden they're dead to you. So since I posted this picture two days ago, which was actually taken when I first got to Panama, it was taken with Randy and me when we were going to get some food. And we, I just arrived at his apartment and we, that was the next morning. So the next morning we went to go get some food. We saw a big queue on the side of like a hotel or something and we thought it was funny because people call us Q Anon supporters. Honestly, I don't even know like that much about Q. I think like way back in the day when they first started like talking about some conspiracy theories, I like maybe looked into them a little bit, but I lost interest after a while because I'm just like trying to survive and get through the day. So I don't even like follow this stuff that much. And then somebody did a video with a bunch of things that Randy had posted about Q. And and we, I, I don't consider myself a conspiracy, theor a conspiracy theorist. I just like to know what different perspectives are out there. I'm sort of on this emotional train of social media as well. I just like didn't know that human beings love to hate so much. Uh, like they shouldn't have shocked me because the vegans have tried to cancel me before and I find like these big Facebook groups super toxic and, and plus it's like this fantasy space where everybody's just like behind their computers being the meanest that they can. This outfit is underrepresenting vegetables and they are food too. And I never understood mean people because I'm sort of of the mindset like none of us asked to be born. We all are dealing with like a variety of physical issues, mental issues. We all live in a, a very oppressive society where we have to figure out how to get food to eat and have shelter. And then we're dealing with the emotional issues of like problems with friendship or with family and maybe being emotionally abandoned or 
being hurt or, you know, like there's so many things to deal with on a day-to-day -day basis that makes like getting up and getting through the day really, really hard for people. And people are suffering now more than ever because obviously coronavirus, the economy got shut down. You know, I was just in Panama and I was asking around about like, well, what are people doing here to survive? Because the government, I, I heard, is only giving like $200 a month for people on unemployment. And that's only if you were like registered and had a job already. So there's a lot of people that probably fell through the cracks. And there's like guys in military guns that are, are not, you can't like go out of the house on certain, after certain times. Like women can go to the grocery store and the restaurants and, and go shopping on like Monday and Wednesday. And men can go on Tuesday and Thursday and that was like after the lockdown lifted for eight months people could only go out like a couple hours a week with very little government help and so I'm like what are people doing here to survive because like being from the U.S. originally you forget a lot of times like oh my gosh people have it like really really bad they have it super hard and I'm not saying that people in the U.S. don't have it hard but, like, there's safety nets to some extent. We forget, like, there's, you know, third world countries out there that people are really, really suffering, trying, like, don't have access to food right now and shelter. Um, and, and just to think about, like, what is happening behind closed doors if they're under house arrest and they can't go outside. Like, what if you're, you have an abusive father or mother or what if like there's a sexually abusive situation I mean I just like think of the horror show that's happening behind closed doors when I look at like how quiet a community is right now and it's like I'm in Puerto Rico and like it's super quiet during the day and I'm like what is happening behind those doors we just don't know those are the stories we don't hear about this has been on my mind lately like the suffering the intense suffering that people are going through mentally physically emotionally financially and I think that is the part that really pisses me off the most about this situation with James and Randy and Nikki I mean I don't want to go to their social media because I'm sick of this story. I'm sick of looking at them on social media. But if you go to, like, hang on, I pulled it up on one of these. You know, you go to, like, Randy's page here. He's flaunting that he's, like, staying at this staying at this resort. I'm just so annoyed that I even give him the time of day. And it's like he doesn't even deserve the words on my mouth talking about his Instagram. But, like, he's talking about, like, how these pe this this token is going up this energy web and like this bitcoin thing and like it's just so and this picture of the cats in this resort i miss those cats the resort was nice randy's cooking is better than mine <sighs> let's get away from this page Ugh, oh, really let's get away from that one um it's really cringeworthy that they are selling people on buying into this coin and then buying into their Facebook page where they're going to teach people about this coin when it was it was a deception in the very beginning of what you were buying because the way I was sold on it was this is going to change the future of the world this is like an energy sharing program for the whole world so like you have solar panels energy and then you can like share it with somebody else in another part of the world and like nobody's talking about that also maybe you don't know everything it feels like it's this like hyped up gambling game that's like now 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 look at the numbers are going up they're going up under the guise of this ideal that doesn't even exist yet and it's confusing for people and then to focus on your followers to, to like share this as non-financial advice to the like hundreds of thousands of followers that you have gotten to trust you through the years through your work in animal rights. So like you've built up a trust with these people and now you're using that trust from one area which was animal rights to get them to to like get excited about this gambling program you're in and nobody really knows like 
how it's going to all turn out, then if this best life living is so in our faces right now, if they do get rich, and I mean, some of us might want them to, so they'll actually give it to the animals, but if they do get rich, it's going to be so in our faces, them telling us, well, you should have listened to me when I said to get in at $10, now it's up to 50 and we've made millions. And it's like, who has $220,000 to invest your life savings in? I cannot not go to Instagram. And then on top of it, like, to be flaunting these smoothie bowls, all these fruits and cacao and, and like, expensive products for some people. Well, maybe those products are cheap where they're living. I hate my supermarket. Like, people are relying on, like, pasta and beans. Well, we are, maybe not everyone, I hate you. A lot of times, that's all they can get. Or, or I don't know what they can, can have access to. I'm not even in those people's lives. So to, to just, like, do that and then flaunt at the same time this, like, what looks like this like playboy lifestyle um a playboy lifestyle is not usually people that are married and who are you to tell people that they can't have their bodies out maybe they just like that you're such a drag in a resort with your i don't know with your bodies out on show for the world to me i just it just feels gross to me and i want to like move my eyes away from it and move on. Okay, I'm going to kind of change gears for a second and talk about Dorothy and Hungla in Panama. This is the animal sanctuary that James had posted a couple of posts on and he got he got kind of scolded by some people. And that, like that's the name of the game with vegans is scolding. So, I wanted to trace back where the scolding came from. And I found it. I believed I found it because it what came from a couple of people in a group called Vegans in Australia. And there's a moderator in there, and she really hates James and watches every single little thing that he does. So she can report back to 63,000 people what a bad person he is. It's all quite entertaining, actually, but it's also disgusting. She was the one that originally posted on James Post, she and a few other people, and for somehow she found a picture. She was so mad she found a picture from like nine years ago and it was a monkey on a dog's back. And there was another picture of the same monkey on a goat's back. And she, she put this picture all over the internet on multiple vegan groups. Somehow this picture got back to the animal police in Panama. I asked Dorothy about it. She got a translation from the lady that was working with her that day because it was done in Spanish, and that's what the, the police said. They were, they were contacted by, by someone in the public, and they were not allowed to say who, and I don't know if it was Claire or if it was... There's another lady that is like, runs like a primates, a primates Facebook group, or she's like... She, I, I know because she gives me a lot of hatred online also, and it was somebody there, and... It was really surprising to me, like, that, you know that saying, haters gonna hate? Like, haters gonna hate. They hate James, but they also hate Dorothy, even though James is the one that threw Dorothy under the bus. It's actually not James' followers that, that are so, like, beholden to him that are the ones that are doing the hating of, of Dorothy. The, a lot of James followers have said, thank you for sharing this, but it's the haters of James that are obsessed with every move that he makes. Some girl, Sarah Fox, who has a dreadful YouTube page. Did James ask me kill a puppy? But she's especially been trying to ruin Dorothy lately. She posted this picture of uh, a screenshot of a menu, apparently, that had animal products on it and I asked Dorothy about it she said that was from eight years ago she had leased out the restaurant at one point to somebody and, and now like Sarah has no idea and is has made it her mission to bring this lady down in a different country it's like Sarah like work on improving your station or your heart
do anything but try to tear this poor woman down. It's honestly disgusting, this behavior by vegans. I I'm grossed out by you claiming to be a journalist that has six years of experience behind her, yet she hasn't even called Dorothy to ask her about the accusations that she's making in a group that blocked Dorothy from even entering and being able to defend herself. I had to rehome my two cats in 2019 due to finding out I was severely allergic to my cats and my lungs functioning half of what they should due to my allergies. They got rehomed close to my home and one of the cats got extremely sick and had kidney and liver failure and was on a feeding tube. I raised money to help cover the vet bills and posted every bill to show the costs and updates and sent every single penny to her new home who is a single mom. Every legit sanctuary and rescue I know also does the same things. But not with Jungla so far. I'm sorry, I'm getting emotional. I mean, you could have cleared up a lot of this by giving Dorothy a call, but do these people do that? No. They're just as bad as James is, in my opinion. They've made entire face group pages associated with this. I know because I was in one. There's one called Blocked by the Aspies. And I got blocked by the Blocked by the Aspies group because... What they ended up doing after they shared my videos is they trolled my Facebook page. They went back, I don't know, several months, maybe to last summer, and they found a few posts that I had written, and they decided that I'm a QAnon Trump-supporting white supremacist, excuse me, white supremacist racist. And a lot of this has to stem with some questions I was making about the political nature of the Black Lives Matter group last year. I was called racist and for, like, just questioning some things. I'm a documentary filmmaker. I just kind of want to know the roots of things. I ask, I ask questions. It's what I do for a living. Also, I think it's worth noting, I was born in 1978, which means, like, the term racist was different back then. It was different growing up. It sort of meant, like, you weren't okay with people of other races, which I have always felt like I was okay with people of other races, unless they do something specific to me, like unless it's like an individual. I take it at an individual level. And did this person, you know, treat me badly or, or do something that I felt was like was unethical toward me? And not hearsay, but like to me. So I don't consider myself racist, but a friend of mine explained to me that, like, in the new era, that's not, we're in, like, the world of social media now. So to not be a racist, you actually have to align yourself with the, the group that is the loudest speaking against racism and share that you aren't racist online so other people online see that you're not. And it's just like, it's like kind of like a strange new way of proving to people that you're not racist. So I'm like still kind of trying to understand all of this because I try to operate not as much in like the world of the behind the computer, but like in my day to day life. Like I say, Maggie, what can I actually control about myself today? Okay, so I'm living in Puerto Rico. I have a tiny little studio apartment. I'm going to go to the supermarket. I'm going to maybe grab a beer at the local bar. I'm going to do some writing. I'm going to do some editing. Like this is the this is what my day consists of. So what can I actually do in my power to be a good person and to accept all races? So I was just thinking about it differently and really like philosophically trying to digest the general conversation that was going on online about about everything last summer. This is how my brain like processes this. And these people in these big big groups, like some of these groups have like like tens of thousands of people in them, started like like trolling my page, screenshotting old things I said, and all of a sudden like I I'm a garbage person. Vegans love to use the word garbage and trash. So I was being called garbage and trash, and then I got blocked by all the groups. So I wanted to, to prove a point. Let's talk math for a minute. So I had spent, you know, first of all, two weeks in Panama. It was emotionally a lot. You know, when, when Randy fired me at James's 
suggestion. I'm stuck six hours away from where my stuff was in Randy's apartment. Randy wanted me to take money for his cats and physically go to the ATM, get it out of my bank account, and hand it to his roommate, which is what we had the little fight about that made them block me and say they're going to call the police if I stayed at the house. But, like, my stuff was there. He still wanted me to hand the cash. So I'm six hours away. I had to, like, contact, I had to find, like, the number of his friend to get her to drive me back. He didn't even ask the friend if it was okay. So, like, I went back with the friend, and I stayed at his house for, for a couple of nights. And I filmed that video in sitting in his bed, and I was friends with his roommates. A lot of people have been asking me, like, did you take the cats? Are they your cats now? And then, like, I've seen some comments of people being like, but the cats are now at Show Pony, which is that resort they're at right now. I didn't take the cats. I had to get my way, find my way back there, stayed a couple nights, and then I got the first flight the fuck out of there. I'm not going to work on an expose while I'm still in Panama, like, staying with them. So I go back to Puerto Rico, where I have a place, and that's where you see that picture in the background um, where I made the phone call to the, the, the energy guy. I did that from here. That's when I had the call. So I'm back here. I post the videos. They get shared in these big groups, and then people troll my page and start like being really rude and trying to discredit what I have said, which I feel like, I don't know. I, I don't know if I'm just like too sensitive, but I was just like, these people have never met me and they're just taking, they're taking hearsay upon hearsay. So they're basically taking what was started with this vegan drag queen last summer who saw my Ben Shapiro, Tucker Carlson videos and a few questions that I made about just politics last summer. And they looked at those and then start trashing my name. And then the same people, the same moderator, Claire Suzanne, this person Catnip, and like a few other people from the Vegans in Australia group that hates James, by the way, and this Blocked by the Aspies group also that hates James, they start reposting this picture of the monkey and the dog and the monkey and the goat, the same picture that somehow made it back to the animal police and have caused Dorothy some problems with them coming to her place. They put the possum in the, they locked up the possum because of it. Now she has to pay, pay to hire this biologist, and there's like a few other fees from people that actually have no idea how even the, the government works in a third world country. Like, can we trust the government there? I mean, I saw a hilarious post from one of them where, like, this could have been the best thing that ever happened, James going and exposing Dorothy, so now she's under scrutiny. And I'm like, since when have, like, cops and the government been the people we want to entrust our animals with for the best of their individual care? Like, are you serious? Even if that worked okay in the country you're in or in the neighborhood, in the freaking white privileged neighborhood you're in, somewhere. Does it work like that in Panama? You know, and these people are the first to like to throw other people under the bus for not like checking their privilege when look at your privilege and even saying that. I mean, they're such hypocrites. And so I just saw like what hypocrites these ladies were and it's almost like they're like the beginning of the virus. You know how like when coronavirus came to the US, it had to start with like one person? That's how it starts. In these human groups, there's like one or two people that are just really nasty and want to be mean for no reason and want to like take Dorothy down and want to take me down and it's like a gotcha. I'm going to prove this awful Trump supporter. I mean, by the way, I live in Puerto Rico. I can't even vote in the elections. I want to just prove to them their own mentality of how they can see one picture or one headline or one comment, or one video on social media, and all of a sudden, they think they know the entire situation. They're like, they think they understand what happened, who that person is, what they're all about, and it's not true. It's like they make up stories in their mind to try to fill in the blanks of what the truth actually is. And we are always doing this to some degree or another. I mean, I don't know how many of you have looked at like an ex's page and seen them like 
with a new person or or looked at like a, a best friends page with some food and you think they have a great life but really like that picture was taken and they're really sad inside and they're just trying to like make up for it by getting some likes like we do this all the time on social media we, we fill in the blanks with what we think is going on in that situation when we weren't there we don't know the heart of that person I, I just wanted to make a point that like this is what started the whole thing in the first place with James James's post about Dorothy's sanctuary and how people saw the post of the squirrel and they hated James and they assumed it was a petting zoo and the, people called her an animal abuser because this monkey had jumped on this dog's back and I even asked Dorothy about that monkey the monkey, okay, it's Panama. Again, you people of your state of privilege that don't understand how nature works in a third world country, it's like Panama. Monkeys wander around. They're sort of like there in nature. So the monkey wanders on nine years ago, wanders onto the property as a friendly monkey and like hugs the dogs, is play, playful with the dogs. Dorothy eventually had to find that monkey a new place in nature for its own safety because, first of all, Okay, humans have come into their area, all right? So that's just an issue in planet Earth, okay? So it, it exists. There's problems between wildlife and then domestic life, and this is the world we're living in. So Dorothy being a problem solver with a brain on her shoulders, all that years, years ago ended up finding the monkey another place to live. Everything is fine now. The monkey's not hugging the dogs. She said it was all, like, everyone was liking each other, but she didn't want a dog to get startled one day and bite him. So she's, like, trying to, trying to solve the issue. Okay? So fast forward, we have these, these people, these toxic virus poison people in these big groups trying to just hate on everybody and discredit everybody. A lot of people were like, Maggie, what is up with your last post? Are you a QAnon supporter? And, like, I you're losing credibility. And I'm like, I'm losing credibility. I mean, I just put in put in 2 weeks of time with them, a lot of emotional trauma. I spent, you know, a good 5 days straight in front of my little computer and very uncomfortable chair, uh going through all my footage and trying to make a documentary for free, which I've made $0 on to tell my side of the story, and I put one picture up with a cue in the background, and all of a sudden, I'm in on the scam. I'm I'm one of them. I I'm a I'm I can't be trusted. It's like it perpetuates people. People make up things in their head that aren't true from images we see on social media, which is what I was saying is the exact reason that we're in this place in in the situation in the first place. So, like, that's my point. That is my freaking point of both documentaries. And it proves it right here. So, there you go. And then I made this video that was just like, guys, social media is a fantasy space. It's, like, to some extent going to be a lie. You know why? Because you weren't there and you have no idea. And we're all just trying to make up ideas in our mind about what we thought happened. And these people think that I'm the conspiracy theorist? They're the, we're all conspiracy theorists. If you think that social media is real and you make up things that aren't true when you weren't even there. And everybody just needs to stop doing this. And also, just for the record, I think people that are toxic poison people, the people that tried to bring Dorothy down and are still actively on these large spaces that they're part of creating, and then manipulating the minds of just the regular people in there that want vegan information, I think they are even worse than James and Randy. That's why I was so pissed the other day. I took down all my Instagram posts about this. You know why? Because I didn't want all your ugly comments to make my Instagram page look ugly. And, and I wanted it to be, be nice looking again. Because you guys just spread hate. I think James and Randy might be stupid, but also they might end up making a lot of money from all of this. Their coin is up. You know, I don't invest in crypto. Maybe I'm the stupid one because I'm still working for like friggin' 15 bucks an hour and charging zero dollars for my documentaries. Maybe I'm the stupid one. And, and like everything is relative.
You know, I'm not out there to, to bring them down. You know what I was doing? I was telling my side of the story. That's all we ever have. We don't ever know the full, full truth. Okay? Because we all, we all are digesting information differently and through the filters of our own head. The only truth that we know is the truth that we experience. And I wanted to tell a story from my perspective, and that's all the story is. Some people were like, why did you go into so much detail about you and Randy and share the voice messages? I just wanted to get to the chase of, like, you exposing them. And I'm like, it actually wasn't even, it wasn't even my main objective. I'm more interested about the psychology behind it all. You can decide what you think about it after you get as many facts as you think you can gather, but there's still going to be missing pieces. And that's all I have to say. You know, if Randy or James wants to have a Zoom call with me, we'll record it. I'm not, like, even that mad. It, it's annoying. Their posts piss me off because people are actually suffering. And it's like I cringe and I don't like the way they're going about it. And I don't think it's super ethical that you're using a fan base that thought they were in it for something else. And now they're like a attached to you from an animal rights perspective. And you kind of switch it up and make it into this thing that you think they should invest in. But you're not a financial advisor. Like, I don't like that. I don't think it's like, it's not my ethics. You know, it's, it's not like what I'm about. But we're all completely different. And that's just what I wanted to say about about all of this what else is it? I, there's nothing else to say I guess there's nothing else to say we're all just trying to like survive and make it and be happy and everyone just like be nicer to to everybody I guess and I think like less hatred would be nice thank you for the donations to Dorothy they completely dropped off but I mean it was great to have them for a few days I think she's you know, she got a lot excited and she was able to finish some habitats, but like the animals need continuing help. So if anybody wants to go to her website, um, I'll post it in the, the link below. You can, the best way is like a small donation, but on a monthly basis. So even if it's like $5 a month and she gets enough of those, then she knows the money's coming in and doesn't have to worry as much. Um, and if you can make it out there for a visit, I know she'd love to have you. So I'll be doing um, some updates on how the animals are doing, how Dorothy's doing. And thanks for watching, watching my station. And just, like, let's just, like, be nicer to people. Let's not take f social media at its face value. Understand we're always assigning a little bit of story to that image or that video or that, even those black and white letters, you know, those black and white letters that somebody writes. It might have been a one-time thing. It might have, you might have taken it differently. It doesn't mean like that person is the scum trash, garbage. We, we shouldn't be trashing and garbaging people, anybody. You know, if I had a penny for the amount of times people call me like trash. It's just like sickening, it's sad, and let's just like we're all here in this earth, like together, and it's like not going great, you know? So, okay, that's all I got. Have a good one, bye.